savage to alarm him. The black man struggling, black vans come for him. All this crime, divine in the spirit, and wolves in the street. Our kids gotta eat. We move with the savage. Peace to Allah. Peace. The black man struggling, black vans come for him all the time. We divine in the spirit, and wolves in the street. Yeah. Our kids gotta eat. We move with the savage. Yo. Hey yo, LAZ man, holla at me if you need those features. You heard, collab with me on the song. I got beats too, that's fire. You heard, if you're a rapper, you're a producer, you want to put in that music, work with me, get at me. You already know I got that promo on Instagram and YouTube. Get that collab and that promo for one great price. You heard, send me an email at the gempopllc at gmail.com or hit me up on Instagram. Send me a DM at Real St. Laz. Yurt. Hey yo, I'm Fal, focused on understanding life. This is Gem Pop TV, and these are the five Brooklyn albums you better be streaming. One, Smith & Wesson, The Shining. Two, Jay-Z, The Dynasty. Three, MC Light, Eyes on This. Four, Big Daddy Kane, Long Live the Kane. Five, B.I.G., Ready to Die. Hey yo. If you need that Instagram promo, my Instagram be popping. Send me a DM. But yo, check it. You know, years back, man, before weed became legalized in New York and it was a smoke shop on every corner in New York, you know, it used to be real risky trying to cop weed. Like, certain spots you would go to to get weed, you would actually have to take a risk of getting locked up because if police caught you coming from the weed spot, they will run down on you, hop out the car, ask for your ID, lock you up if they find weed on you and all of that. It was crazy. So you had to be real careful when you copped, how you copped and where you copped. You know, it was times where dudes was getting chased by detectives like this was a serious serious waste of taxpayers money it was putting people's lives in danger it was putting police lives in danger like y'all was chasing dudes down blocks and and chasing dudes down in your car to catch a dude with a bag of weed coming off a, a hot dykeman block or something like that it was disgusting i even remember a time when um my man copped on the block. My man copped on the block. And then he came and got in my car. Like I was parked around the corner or whatever. And he came and got in my car. And them dudes actually followed him from the spot, pulled us over, yanked us out the whip, told my man, listen, man, we seen you cop the weed. We know you got it. You know, it's not that big of a deal. Just give us the weed and we going to let y'all go. You heard? And I thought the cop was being sincere. I was a fool because, you know, my man ended up just saying, and you know, I was like, and you know, first of all, I couldn't believe they was gonna take my man to jail, even to the precinct for, you know, a bag of weed. That's super petty. So, you know, my man was like, yo, whatever, man, here, take the weed. Niggas threw the cuffs on him. I said, yo, you just said, you not locking them up and all of that. Now I mean, I'm like, yo, y'all niggas is foul, man. Real talk. Niggas locked my man up. He was like, he's only going to the precinct. He's gonna get a desk appearance. He's gonna get a desk appearance ticket and he's gonna come out. Don't worry. And I'm like, yo, but still, bro, y'all putting him in cuffs, throwing him in the back of the motherfucking van and all of that crazy shit over a, over a bag of weed. That's a little excessive, man. Come on, bro. And the reason why they banned those laws is because the only people that was ever really getting locked up for that shit was blacks and Hispanics, bro. That's the only people that was getting locked up under them bullshit ass quality of life, weed harassing people for weed laws. You understand what I'm saying? Straight up. And it was many a times, many a times, I got stopped by police coming off a block, found with weed, you understand what I'm saying? and all of that and now i was watching new york one the other day and they were showing this program that you know these brothers put together for uh black blacks and minorities or whatever that was victims of those weed arrests and shit like that 
And I got to get at those brothers because I'm sure when I comb through my rap sheet, it's a few arrests for weed, but I want to talk about one in particular now. You heard? Now, I might have spoke about this on live before, but I'm going to go into full detail. So, you know what I mean? We was all living in Dykeman, right? Now, Dykeman is a bunch of hot-ass weed blocks that we, we be copping on or whatever. Sometimes you don't want to fuck with those blocks at a certain time of night because it's just be crazy shit. It done been times, I remember one time, it done been times where, you know, we cruised up on a hot Dykeman block to go get weed while my son hopped out to go get the tank. Somebody else was out there trying to rob the spot or rob one of the workers on the block. Niggas just start blaming. Bloop, 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 bloop. My son come running back to the car. Yo, yo, pull off, man. Niggas is shooting. You feel what I'm saying? And we like, damn, nigga. Like, niggas can't even go get a bag of weed without getting caught up in some crossfire or something. I already told y'all my story on how I got caught in the shootout in Washington Heights looking for a bag of weed at 2, 3 in the morning. If you ain't never see that story, go check that out. You heard? But, um... Yeah, man, so, you know, we was all in Dykeman. We used to that hot block weed cop and shit. But um, eventually, niggas like Bucker moved out of Dykeman and moved to the Bronx. I moved to the Bronx. We was all scattered around. So, Bucker used to be staying, um, hanging out on Gun Hill Road. Now, Gun Hill Road is hot as a firecracker. You know what I mean? It used to be hot as a firecracker when, you know, I'm talking about, um, all the way up Gun Hill Road. You feel what I'm saying? Towards Jerome and all of that. But it's like, yeah, Bucker was hanging out there. So, you know, Bucker had the dank or his peoples had the dank. So I would occasionally slide over there and see Bucker and go get a bag or something from the bro. Know what I mean? So this one night I called Bucker. I'm like, yo, son, where you at? He like, yo, I'm on the block. I'm like, yo, I'ma swing through. I'm like, yo, it's out there? He like, yeah, it's out here. I said, all right, I'ma swing through and I'ma grab a bag up. You heard we could blow something down or whatever and I'ma grab a bag and keep it moving. So he like, all right, bet. You heard so. I pull up on, I pull up over there on Gun Hill, probably like 12 o'clock at night or something like that, maybe one. And I call a nigga Bucker. I'm like, yo, what up? I'm downstairs. I'm in the whip. You feel me? I forgot which car I had at this time. Um, it might have been my Maxima. It was either a Maxima or my Charger. I can't remember. But um, I tell son, yo, I'm downstairs. So I tell son, I'm downstairs. I'm like, yo, I'm out here. He like, all right, give me a minute. You know what I mean? I'm going to snatch that up and I'll come bring it to you. You know, I probably told son, you know, snatch me up two of them joints and I give you the money when you get to the car. You feel me? So he like, I right, bet. So son gets in the car. I see Sonny comes on the block. He gets in the car. We sitting in the car. I got a little half a L in the car. I sparked the half a L, I guess. I sparked the half a L. We might have took a few pulls of the half a L and put that shit out in the ashtray. You feel what I'm saying? Out of nowhere. Motherfucking knocks just pull up. <laughs> Niggas pull up behind us. We on hot ass Gun Hill Road. You feel what I'm saying? Niggas pull up behind us. This had to be like, this had to be like maybe like six, seven years ago, man. Maybe more. You feel me? Maybe more. But it's like, yo, the niggas pull up behind us. <laughs> niggas throw the lights on. We like, oh man. I said, damn, I got the weed that I just bought from Bucker. I threw that in my sock. Soon as I used to get the weed back in those days, I throw that shit directly in my sock. They was very rarely checking a nigga sock. So I threw that shit in my sock. But the clip of the weed that was still in the ashtray, that shit was just put out. It was smelling like weed in the car. Them niggas, them niggas pull up on us, yo. Let me see some ID, ba 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 ba. Step outside the car. Now I mean, we like, what? Why right, we got to step outside the car? They're like, yo, we narcotics officers. We looking for drugs, blah, 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 blah. That's my word. First and foremost, you know, it was a black dude 
And it was a Spanish dude, right? Both of these niggas was pissy drunk, my nigga. You heard? Both of these niggas was drunk, my nigga. I know niggas when they drunk. You feel what I'm saying? Both of them niggas was drunk. I could tell. And the black nigga was smoking a cigar to try to cover the smell of alcohol on his breath. I see through that shit. You just happen to be blowing a big ass cigar while you doing police work and arresting niggas in the street? Yeah, all right, nigga. Your ass is saucy. You heard? So niggas start searching the car, my nigga. Niggas find a little ass roach. Niggas like this, yo, what's this? I'm like, yo, come on, my G, that little ass roach. He like, nah, man, this is enough. This is enough to take you out of jail. You got any more drugs on you? I'm like, nah, I ain't got no drugs on me. Son, them niggas locked up me and the nigga bucker. Put us in cuffs, step out the vehicle. Niggas put us in cuffs for a clip that they found in the ashtray. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, come on, my bro. You understand? You gonna get my car impounded and all of that shit, bring tow my, drive my car back to the precinct, do all of that crazy shit for a bag of weed, my nigga? I mean, for a roach, for a clip of weed? Son, niggas is crazy, son. So, boom. Niggas, niggas put us in cuffs. Niggas take my car. They take us to the precinct, right? So, I'm like, yo, man, this is some bullshit. I'm like, yo, this is some bullshit, my nigga, like, the nigga Bucker is like, yo, bro, word to mother, my job, find out about this arrest, they gonna fire me. I'm like, nah, son, come on, they ain't gonna fire you over no bullshit ass weed arrest. He like, I'm telling you, bro, I mean, them niggas, them niggas is on some bullshit. If they find out about this arrest, they gonna let me go. So I'm like, man, so we in the precinct, right? So these niggas start doing the paperwork and searching us down more and all of that shit. They like, yo, you got any more drugs on you? You got any more weed on you? I'm like, nah, I ain't got nothing. Now, remember, I got the weed in my sock. But I'm like, these niggas ain't going to take off my socks and all of that crazy shit in the precinct. Yo, bro, niggas was like, all right. They start calling everybody. They like, yo, if you got some drugs, let it be known now. Because... If we search you and we find some drugs, we charging you with another charge. You feel me? Hey, man, I'm like, yo, I ain't giving these niggas nothing. I know these niggas ain't taking my socks off and all that dumb shit. Bro, these niggas start calling dudes one by one out of the motherfucking cell in the precinct and telling them niggas they got a strip. I'm like, what? I said, strip? What is this, the penitentiary or something? He like, yo, we narcotics officers. We could do this. We got the rights to do this. We, we, we got different rights and jurisdictions. We can search, we can strip search for drugs. So I'm like, yo, come on, my nigga. Niggas like, yo, everybody got a strip. My nigga, I'm like, oh man. Looking back at it, looking back at it now, that shit happened to me now. At the age I am now, I ain't stripping, my nigga. Y'all gonna have to do what y'all got to do. What the fuck I look like? Now that you know I'm wiser, them niggas would've told me to, them niggas would've told me to strip out of been like, nah, get the fuck out of here. I ain't stripping, my nigga. Do what y'all gotta do. You heard, but I was naive because I never really dealt with narcotics officers like that. So I'm believing that shit like, yo, these niggas got jurisdictions that, you know what I mean? So we stripped down. He like, yo, I took everything off except for my socks. The nigga like, yo, take those socks off. I'm like, ah, oh, man, he gonna find the motherfucking weed. So I tried to take the sock. I, I took one sock off a regular way. Then I tried to, and flapped it out, nothing in it. I tried to take the other sock out on some low shit. And that nigga was watching. And the weed, bite, like two bags of weed just popped out. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And he was like, you see? You see why we strip people down? I was like, man. Well, he was like, didn't I tell you? Um, if you had any, I said, man, what I look like, bro? You know what I mean? I don't tell on myself. You're going to have to do your police work and find that. Nigga, I ain't giving nothing up. He's like, so now you see why we strip. We, so now you see why we strip people down. I'm like, man, I ain't trying to hear that shit. So they held us up in that precinct for hours and hours. Then they finally let us go, check niggas for warrants and all of that shit. And they finally let us go. You know what I mean? I had to go back 
get my car the next day. Bucker, his job found out about that arrest, and he got fired from his job. Lost his whole job off of that arrest. You feel what I'm saying? And me, I got a disappearance ticket and a fine or some shit like that, and I never paid the fine, and that shit turned into a warrant, which I ended up getting, one of the warrants that I ended up getting, is I had a couple that I ended up getting arrested for later on down the line in another story that I got on YouTube called, what is the name of this story? Um, I think it's Locked Up in Bear Mountain. I think that's the name of the story. Locked Up in Bear Mountain, where I got pulled over in Bear Mountain, New York, going upstate, trying to go get some money for a video shoot, for a feature, for a rap feature. You feel what I'm saying? I told that whole story, so if you never saw that story, put in St. Lad's Bear Mountain and go watch that story. But, um, yeah, Bucker lost his job. I ended up with a warrant that ended up getting me arrested on several occasions. You feel me? That same warrant ended up getting me arrested on several occasions. You know, and when I eventually did go through Central Bookings over that warrant, it was the worst experience in Central Bookings of all time. You feel me? And I got that on YouTube too, put in St. Lad Central Bookings. But yeah, man, you know, we got arrested for that shit. The police was drunk as hell. You know what I mean? We wasn't doing nothing but smoking a little weed and copping a little weed. And niggas put us through hell for that shit. And that's what was going on to all black people and Latin motherfuckers that's in the hood that was just trying to smoke weed. Now, y'all niggas is making legal. Y'all making legal dollars off of that. And there's a smoke shop on every... Three smoke shops on every block. You heard, but before that... It was a bunch of us going in and out the system, going through central bookings, getting cuffs put on us, thrown in paddy wagons, getting chased by detectives, Now I mean, getting shot and beat up by cops, all because we wanted to smoke the same thing that y'all dudes is taxing and making money off of. Getting chased by cops, searched, harassed, arrested, warrants developing, my, my bros losing jobs and all of that. Somebody owe us a bag out there for all of that harassment, you heard? But yeah, man, L-A-Z-Z, man, since I pulled over the ski, man, quick little story. Hey, yo, L-A-Z, make sure you go to InSource TV and watch that Super Trife Low Life's episode two, you heard? The link is in the comment section. This Fred the God, son, mural is fire. You heard Bronx stand up, rest in peace to God. Jamie Alexander here with Gen Pop TV, and these are the top five videos for the month. Hey, yo, LAZ, this is something new. It's called Pen Pals, Letters from the Pen. And this first episode is the beginning of the story of the life of my bro Chino Blast from LES in East New York, Brooklyn. Chino is currently in Comstock, if I'm not mistaken, serving a 16 flat. This is chapter one. I was born in a jail cell on April 27th, 1971 on a beautiful island of Puerto Rico. My mother was doing a year in this jail for an assault with a deadly weapon. My so-called father was caught cheating on my mom's while she was cleaning hotel rooms all morning and came home early because of the pain she was feeling while working. First of all, what kind of man lets his pregnant wife work so late into her pregnancy? Second, do you really cheat on your faithful and dedicated wife in her own bed, knowing said wife can go from zero to 101.1 seconds? Anyway. According to my mom's, she came home early one day and hears clearly that her husband is having sex in her bedroom with some whore. And nothing else matters but the total disrespect she's feeling and the instant anger in her gut and heart. She makes her way quickly as an eight month pregnant woman can move into the tiny kitchen in her apartment and grabs the biggest knife that she could find. 
then proceeds into the bedroom like a tornado, swinging the butcher knife at my pops who gets stabbed in his back one time before he rolls off his side bitch and hits the floor screaming. The side bitch gets her face slashed several times and stabbed over and over again in her arms, chest and neck until she feels strong arms pulling her, the lady who by now laying in the bed half dead. All my mother remembers is the pain in her belly, then waking up in the hospital handcuffed to the bed. A few days after the assault, my mom's is taken to jail where she gives birth to me a few weeks or so later. I have no idea why my mom's chose to name me Jesus Miguel Morales because I was a badass kid all my damn life and I lived nothing like Jesus or any other saint for that matter. Truly, truthfully, Lucifer would have fit me better, as even I have to admit, I was crazy and evil as fuck most of the time. A few weeks after I was born, I went to live with my grandma until my moms came home. Well, she came home a few days after that, as she somehow managed to escape the little county jail in PR, snatched me up from my grandma and head to NYC, where her father already lived since the 60s. My grandfather, who was a born hustler, made his home in the Lower East Side of Manhattan, an area known as Alphabet City back in the days, right on 11th Street between Avenue B and C. Not long after moving us in with my grandfather, my mom sent for my older sister Maria and her older brother named Tito once she got her own apartment. My mom's is the sweetest and kindest woman I've ever known and the most dangerous I would later learn. My sister turned out to be a selfish bitch and my brother Tito was worse, which I wouldn't find out how bad until I started getting locked up for dumb shit, then major shit, and being placed in juvenile lockup facilities all over upstate New York. My father made his way to NYC also, but he made East New York Brooklyn his home, and eventually he and my mom shared custody of me, and I was basically living in two different boroughs while growing up. But my mom's met a real nigga when she came to New York and Ben stopped fucking with my real father. She married this dude who became my stepfather and was the realest man I've ever known. He taught me how to box and my uncles, his brothers taught me martial arts, everything I know about guns and cars and how to be a true hustler. Rule number one, they would all tell me is you never ever snitch on anyone, even the cops. And I live by that till this day. I had some crazy ass uncles when I was growing up and even some crazy ass cousins. Read on and you'll see what I'm talking about. When I was five years old, in first grade, I hit this kid in the head with the zipper of my big ass coat. For making fun of my afro, I swung my coat at this kid whose name was Joel. I had no idea that the zipper would bust his ass open and have him leaking all over the place. But it felt good to see all that blood and even better when the teacher escorted me to the principal office because I knew I was gonna go home and now I could watch cartoons all day. At five years old, almost six, I get suspended from school for 30 days for some shit. Plus, I had to see a psychiatrist for a minute to see why I was so angry as a kid. The psychiatrist thought I needed extra help and medication. I thought I was a kid being a kid. By the third and final grade I went to, I was already skipping school for whole semesters and intercepting report cards from the mailbox. I was drinking and smoking cigarettes by then also, plus smoking mad weed and angel dust on a regular basis. The funny shit is, I used to sneak into other schools at lunchtime every day cause I would have the mean munchies and wouldn't dare go home even though my schoolyard led to an empty lot that was right next to my building. When I finally got caught for skipping school for so long, I was sent to a 600 school which basically meant special ed and problem child school in downtown Brooklyn. At first, I hated that shit because it was an all boys school, but then I started liking it because I met a couple of good kids that were a lot like me and I had some fly ass teachers. Me and Hectech were the only Latino kids in the whole school. So of course, I had a lot of fights when I first started going to James D. Lawrence PS 369 on Hoyt and Skimmerhorn Street. It wasn't long before I started carrying a 25 automatic to school and the smart kid that I was, I had a fake gun that was actually a cigarette lighter that looked just like the 25 I had. I kept the real gun in my pockets at all times and the lighter gun in my backpack. And as I already knew sooner or later, someone was gonna tell on me because before I even started getting bullied, I became a bully myself. I had motherfuckers drinking toilet water for using the bathroom too much, knowing the bathroom was my hangout and smoke room. 
and you had to give me a subway tokens every day after school or else. Hey yo, LAZ man, this is to be continued. I wish I could finish this up now, but uh, JPay is considering the bro Chino's life story to be too violent to be messaging somebody with. So I gotta wait for the bro to send the letters in the mail, man. You heard, so soon as I get them letters in the mail with them chapters, I'm back at it. But I had to give y'all the pilot of this because this is going to be big. You heard? Z-Lord, get at me. Hey, yo, LAZ, after this episode, make sure you go check my bros over there at InSource TV and watch that Super Trife Low Life's interview part two with Face Low, you heard? Leave a comment, tell him Z-Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man sent you. Jamie Alexander here with Gen Pop TV, and this is the best performing video of the month. Hey, yo, LAZ, make sure you check out the story of Kool-Aid all four installments you heard we working hey yo laz man if you need that music promotion get at me you heard i'm not only the president of this music promotion thing i'm also a client you heard if you don't know about the god make sure you type in saint laz j to kiss watch my video with kiss watch my video with jim jones and watch my video with conway tony yayo you know too many dudes to mention man you're it I gets it in. You heard they call me Z-Man Suicide Polo with the ski, man. If you need music promotion out there, I'm the best dude you could ever be messing with. You know why? Because I'm an artist, and I know what we need. The truth is speaking. It's Gen Pop Laz, certified cash. They don't know, though. Laz and Tola. Hey, yo, LAZ, make sure you check that store link in the descriptions and in the comment section. Now, I mean, to cop up one of them Gen Pop tees, hoodies, or accessories. Yer. Grew up on Cassidy by Franklin and Lafayette. Took a lot of L's, still excelling, ain't stopping yet. They ain't wanna handle Hey, yo, don't sleep. Real spitters with real bars is still out there, you heard? Check out the bro sick in the head from Staten Island. Link is in the comment section and in the description to this video. Hey, yo, LAZ, if you pushing a good vehicle, make sure you pull up on my bros in Brooklyn in East New York, 225 Montauk, you heard? Brooklyn Splash. This is a father and son black-owned business car wash that's popping in BK. Make sure you pull up, tell them LAZ, Z-Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man sent you, you heard? Once again, that's 225 Montauk between Pickin and Belmont. And in this paragraph with a death wish, my name is Royal Flush. Pardon my exit. Woo! Play the table, get your cards right. Shout to Henny Black, Chief of Royal Flush on the track. We LAZ, make sure you follow Austin Block Records LLC on all platforms. You heard Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. The WDG Draco on.